The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter. Welcome to my special Christmas show. It, this is the year 2019, and we're going to have a fun time. Thank you. And my first guest will be John Dickmeyer. So he's going to be showing several different old Santa figurines and talk about them. So let's go and watch the show. Well, I'm John Dickmeyer. And one thing that's common among people of European descent uh, at Christmas time is the messenger that brings presents to children. And in the United States, he's called Santa Claus, and he has a red suit and all the kids know him. But in other countries there are different different messengers and they're kind of Santa Claus equivalents. Uh, so I'm working today from the International Santa Claus collection. This is what the boxes look like. And I am going to open up the first Santa. And they come in figurines. And here's the first one. Oh my. And I hope I pronounce it right. La Bifana. Oh. You Italian folks are going to object to my pronunciation, but uh, he has his presence and a broom. Oh my! Uh, and and this is just one of the. Santas. Um, the one that would be most uh, well, familiar to a lot of people, particularly in this area, is is the Christ Kindle. The Christ Kindle. And this one doesn't look like a Santa but looks more like an angel. And Chris Kindle does not come on uh, the day that you'd expect. He comes ahead of Christmas on the day for St. Nicholas, the, the, the saint that Santa Claus is named from. Um, closer, but not really uh, like our Santa Claus, is the star man from Poland. Wears blue, a blue robe, and carries a staff or a wand with a star. Sweden. Oh, heavens. Uh, I am not going to try to pronounce this guy's name. 
he looks like a dwarf to me. Uh, and he has a familiar, he has a friend, and his friend is a cat. And I know Patty likes cats. You betcha. So, uh, so that's him. Familiar to a lot of our uh, Hispanic. Hispanic friends. Is from Mexico. And it's Pancho Navidad. Uh, and he's, he's all decked out. Got red pants, but he has the typical uh, Mexican sombrero. Um, and looks very festive. He's got his guitar. Uh, he's all ready to go. Um, so I haven't forgotten anybody from, from the ones that I've brought. But the entire collection has, has many more. Um, this collection's been out for a while, and, and they're highly collectible. So uh, many of you have the collection have, or have items in the collection, and uh, that's kind of our gift to all of you to remind you that Santa Claus comes in many versions to many different nations, but he always brings joy and he always brings presents for children. Thank you, John. Hi, my next guest is Jane Dickmeyer, and she's got a story to tell about Christmas and all that and what she's up to. Hey, here we go. Hi, I'm John Dickmeyer's wife, Jane. He's the one who's in front of the camera most of the time, but I'm there too. We always have a very exciting Christmas for a past, oh, number of decades we have been going to Peoria, Illinois for Christmas to visit my mother who is now 102 years old. She has us all over at her house, my two sisters and my brother and their families. We always have a very good time there. We usually come about the 23rd of December, so we will be there to go to church on Christmas Eve. Our whole family takes up all about one pew in church, if we can all get in the same one, if it's open. And it's always open. <laughs> um, and then the next morning, we go to church again at 10 o'clock, and that's a shorter service. Um, after that, in the afternoon, all around 2 o'clock or so, we'll have dinner. And after we get all the dishes done later in the day, we'll open presents. And this, uh, lately, we have had a dollar gift exchange, which has been uh, very interesting and always um, a fun time. And my mother seems to get most of the presents in our family. She says, oh, another one for me? And she has a big pile of presents <laughs> next to her. <laughs> and she does really very well opening them. And after that, we'll just uh, sit around Oh, for a few hours talking and we usually stick around the next day too and we always find plenty of things to do the day after Christmas and then we'll take off the day after that 
and we've been doing this for several years and we have always just had a good time in Peoria. What about chocolate? Oh, um, that is a main ingredient of getting together. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year I was asked to make my famous thumbprint cookies and put chocolate in that year. And I did that, I got my old recipe out, which I had never made with chocolate before. And I made, I made it just the way the recipe said, and it went over very well. It turned out? <laughs> yes, it did. Jane, is chocolate <laughs> one of the major food groups? <laughs> it is in Peoria. <laughs> Every yeah. time we get together, there has to be at least one form of chocolate there. How about cookies? Oh, um, there always have to be cookies too. Mm -hmm. um, every year I'm asked, oh, a week or so before Christmas, what cookies are you going to bring, Jane? And I say, oh, the usual, which is the usual three I always bring. Uh, my pecan butter balls, um, my marble squares, which is really a chocolate chip cookie made into a square, and my thumbprint cookies. And uh, they always go over real well. And those are some of the uh, cookies my mother used to make when she was making every kind of cookie every year. Well, she made a lot of them, didn't she? Oh, yes. And we did a very good job of eating them all. That was our job. <laughs> so which one disappeared fastest? Something with chocolate in it. Uh, fudge was always a favorite. Mom oh, would always my. make fudge. That's my weakness. And I think there will be several forms of chocolate. Well, thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. We're going to have you back on my... Christmas special we're doing next year. So thank you, and I hope you have a grand time up in Peoria with your husband, John, and we'll catch you later. Goodbye. Have a Merry Christmas. Today we celebrate our lives Looking back on the years that have passed We all make mistakes, now it's time to forgive We live this season in our way Now wave goodbye, say happy
Hello, this is Patty again. We're going to be interviewing some two wonderful people, Sloan and Jody. Yes. Hi. And we're going to talk about what they're going to be doing for Christmas and what uh, they do on the Uncle Ducky show, which I'm into as Mrs. Claus with an E. Anyways, who would actually talk first? What do you do? Um, well, I play Jody Extreme, mm -hmm. which is like a like a militant um, Barbie fitness instructor. Yeah, for with kids a whistle. Whistle. with a whistle. Oh, and God, you didn't bring the whistle with you. Oh, oh I know, right? Well, yeah, I was gonna say that would have been cool. I should have that. The cats would have been out though. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's pretty loud when you're not, you know, in a studio filming and things. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I play Jody Extreme, and she plays Sloney Extreme. And we, oh. we work on kids' fitness and just being healthy in general. And that's our little segment that we do on the Uncle Ducky Show. And then we go out into the community and get to interview people and get mm -hmm. to be at some of the fun events like Busker Fest and um, like Fright Night. That's Fright a good Night. one that we oh, always wow. like. And like dressing up and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we get to go to Comets, the Comets games. We get to go sometimes to the Tin Cap Stadium mm. and interview people. Well, and we would just... go with you at certain times. Yes, for sure. With Uncle Ducky. Yes. And you guys went to Busker Fest that one year, and yeah. we had we had great food from John Maxwell down there. Oh, Remember that, that when he had his truck? Raging Cajun had his truck. They have their own uh, restaurant now up in Thompson. Yes, NOLA on 13. I saw oh, that. Yes. On so, Sloan. Um, I play Sloane Extreme on Uncle Ducky Show, and I, I sometimes do out of my, like, different parts. Like, I play um, Dorothy like a few years ago and I did Percy because um I forget his name. Oh somebody somebody did the guy show who up. plays Percy um was sick so was sick. So we didn't do that. And um she she's basically like her but I'm like her sidekick. I th I, th I feel like I'm her sidekick and I'm supposed to um like back up what she's saying about um fitness and like you not being on screens all the time. That's good. That's good. And you help m mom when she she brings you out, eh? Mm -hmm. In the front of the TV set. Uh, oh, what you got? What, what do you have there? Y um, a ukulele. Show me. Oh, that's what it looks like. Now, where did you start to get interested in your ukulele? Um. Well, um, our school was sponsored by yeah. Little Kids Rock. Mm -hmm. And we got a bunch of instruments, including guitars, ukuleles. Um, then you get a, a drum, drum kit. set, yeah. yeah. And we got like microphones. Yeah, for sure. And oh. it's Little Kids Rock is part of an initiative to put more modern music into schools. Who and put so, that on? Who put that on? Sweetwater, Sweetwater. is part of, well, it's, they, anyway. they're not solely Little Kids Rock. That's like a national program, but they definitely participate in it, and they definitely sponsor. Like, they, yeah. they, they give a lot. They do a lot in donations as mm -hmm. far as the instruments and the equipment and things like that. And um, Laura McCoy is her music teacher, and she's been doing it for like 25, 30 years, and she just... She has? She's only 10. Oh, no, I know, right? <laughs> Not Sloan. She's taken... This I'm is her... Kidding. This will be her second year... Second year? ...in ukulele, and she came home as no. soon as she... Third? Third. You, third oh. year in ukulele. And you're and her mom, and you didn't know? Well, no. Yeah. I couldn't remember if they started in second grade or third grade, and it turns out they started in first grade with her second. doing three. Second? Three Se ago. Second. Three we'll years get this ago. right. Anyways, can you sing a Christmas song? Mm, yes. But only if everybody out there and you guys sing with us. Do we know it? <laughs> yeah, you do. One, two, three.
she, I, I messed slept. up in singing. You myself. did great. You did, did great. Good, I love Christmas music, don't you? Yes, absolutely. And she's only been playing this for like a couple of years. So what do you got to do for Christmas? What are we gonna do for Christmas? Well, we're gonna do for well, <laughs> well, we're gonna try. We're gonna try to get the. Oh, there you go. The pick out of the ukulele. That's first. But um, what we like to do for Christmas is basically we just have some good food. We decide um, we don't have like a traditional Christmas meal because yeah. Christmas is actually also my birthday. Ah, so my, my mom. Well, we do have a tradition. I uh, need double the presents for you. You're going to be uh, double so the presents. Years. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, no, I'll tell you, I'm going to be 48 years old. That's how old I'm going to be. I'm 19 years older than you. 19 years older than you. All right. Oh. Well, yeah, so, mm -hmm. I, yep, and so this year, I mean, like, in every year, um, my mom started a tradition that on your birthday, you got to pick whatever dinner, so we've had all kinds of fun things. We've had um, lasagna, we've had, usually we do some sort of spaghetti, sometimes we do a turkey, sometimes we do steak. Um, one year, I wanted an all crock pot Christmas, mm. so we did meatballs and chili and cheese dip and anything that would go in a crock pot that's what I asked for because I loved it all now now I eat a lot cleaner now now it's not going to be so much like Pig that poke. huh Pig in a poke like a Pig hot, in a dog. Poke. hot dog like, in, a, in a bun yeah we, we've we've had stuff like that too. did you eat pizza junction did I eat pizza junction no I've never had pizza junction for Christmas but yeah no it's super good but yeah so what do you make now that you're doing Clean, healthy food. Clean, healthy food. You know what? Usually we do stuff um, basically just like we make a turkey. A turkey's um, pretty clean and make mashed potatoes without Washes. all of the, yeah, make mashed potatoes without all of the um, butter because I can't, I, I can't have butter anymore. How um, margarine? Um, I can't have margarine, but margarine's not so good for you. So, I mean, like, I kind of have to alternate and pick and choose my battles um, at this point. Um, just usually um, maybe a little butter, maybe some garlic salt, maybe a little horseradish in our mashed potatoes. Horseradish. I, yeah, I don't eat gravy. Love it. No gravy. I can't I can't do the gluten part of it. Do and you it's eat not meat? Huh? Do you eat meat like beef? Oh yeah, that? oh yeah. So I mean like Fill menu. Oh, 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 oh yes, for sure. For sure. How could you not? So I mean like yeah, and I mean just good clean vegetables, um and um just some sort if I have you know, everybody has to have a birthday cake. Now, I don't um, usually do like a gluten-free cake, although you can. Usually, I just get to eat a few bitefuls of the frosting off of it. So, if oh. I get a regular cake, I'll just take a little bit. No you know cake, what I mean? But just some frosting? No cake, just some frosting. Oh, my stars. And who takes it home? Who takes it home? <laughs> we divvy that up. So, if you come for Christmas, we'll just cut big slabs and everybody send it. Send it. You like cake, though, don't you? What's you're, your, you're a cake girl. What's your favorite song? Christmas song. A Christmas song? Yeah. Well, when I was little, what would I always say? What would, what would I always say when I was little? Uh, Jingle Bells? I would. Yeah? You would sing Jingle Bells? There's a lot of good songs out there. Oh, so many. Frosty I know the my, I, I know my mom's favorite one. Which one? Is it? Santa Baby by Santa Baby. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we like that one. Santa Baby is good. <laughs> That's her oh, favorite one. Earth a Kit. Yes, saying that. Eartha Kitt, yeah. and I think Madonna did one of those. And I thought it was... Yeah, Taylor Swift did Santa Baby. There's a lot of girls. Oh, yeah. that I thought it was stuff. Marilyn Monroe who did that. No, she never did that. No. no. She looked like Eartha Kitt, though. In the Eartha Kitt is different than Marilyn Monroe. But, you know, I hope you have a great Christmas. Yes, we hope you have a great Christmas with Bob. Would you like to say to my audience, what would you like to say about Christmas and all that? Yes, well, well, we'd like to say Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody. Hope everybody has a blessed New Year. And um, just um, we're so thankful that we get to spend any kind of time um, being on shows like Patty's Page and Uncle Ducky, um, you know, um, spending time with you and your family. And hopefully thank you so much for um, allowing us to do that. And we hope you have many blessings the, the, whole, new, the whole year through. And you yeah. slow. Um, and I feel like, I feel like my favorite, um, Christmas song, Jingle Bell Rock, I feel like. Ah, that's, that's a wild one, isn't it? What, what do you have to say to the, to the kids at home about Christmas? Christmas? Happy, happy holidays and Merry Christmas and... Well, don't, well, don't be like, gr like, not, I'm not trying to say greedy, but I'm trying, like... Be thankful for what yeah. you have. Yeah, and, what and you like, get. don't ask for things that are like impossible. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and um, 
make sure you're really nice because you might get a Christmas elf. Oh yeah, Christmas elf. Christmas elf. Yeah. They come and watch you. They come and watch you and see how good you've been in Return to Santa, and they leave you gold coins. Except that's from my experience. Mm-hmm. And Don't amaze we, me, Annie. We need we. We named ours um, Santa Hunter, actually. So, thank you, thank you so much for being on my show, and everybody say, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. Well, you know, our next guest will be Matt Gerber. He's the one that put music to several of my songs, Two Little Owls, and all that, and he will be on in about a moment to talk about what he's going to be doing for Christmas and uh, possibly for New Year's too. So he's also going to sing a Christmas song on his guitar. So we'll be with you in a sec. Bye bye. Hey, Matt Gerber. Yes, hello. You're back on my show again, kid. Yes, thank you for having me back on your show, Patty. <laughs> So, Christmas is coming. What's happening with you? Yeah, Christmas is not too far off. Uh, and uh, just keeping, keeping busy, getting, uh, getting ready for Christmas. What you doing? What you up to? Well, I do have a, a show or two that I'm, uh, that I'm uh, getting ready for and uh, going to be playing some music. And also, of course, there's always the uh, getting ready to go see friends and family. So, uh, getting Christmas presents and things like that. Ah, wow. How many people in your family? A lot or in between or? Uh, well, I have a. Well, I have two younger brothers. Mm -hmm. And and I have uh, I have three nephews and one niece, and. And so I get together with them and my parents usually for Christmas. So we have a, it's a small, relatively small get together, but we have uh, a large extended family that we do try to get out to see during the, the Christmas holidays. How's the weather up there right now? Well, right now it's not too bad. It's, uh, it's on the sunny side, but uh, I'm sure that'll change. I'm sure that'll change very quickly. If you don't like the weather, it, it, just wait a couple of minutes and it changes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. We, we always have different kinds of weather that, uh, that come through up here. It's a bit unpredictable, but I think it's going to be a very snowy winter. In Canada, eh? Yes. That's Wait. right, eh? Eh? Hey. Uh, are you doing gigs with your band? or? Yes, I, I've have a, I have a couple of... Uh, shows that I'm planning for in the new year with a band, but I've been playing mostly solo shows recently. Mm. Uh, although, although I have I have played uh, as part of another band recently, and that band was called Emerald Bay. Oh, so that was a that was a fun that was a fun night, and I hope that we're able to do some more gigs. So, what are the songs that you'll be singing for New Year's then? Do you know? I haven't quite selected them yet. I. That sounds like fun. Do you, do you have any favorite songs for New Year's, Patty? Two Little Owls. <laughs> Two Little Owls, my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, a lot of people are liking that. I put that on my show and, and other people's shows, and they love that. They think it's cute. Well, I think it's a nice. I think it's a nice song, and and I do. Uh, I do want to do something a little bit more with that song as well. Oh, so, you do. So, so I, uh, as of right now, I'm still working on uh, working on a second children's album. Oh yeah. And it's not. It's not quite. It's not complete. And I'm not. I don't really have a, a schedule time for completion as of yet. But oh yeah. I'm hoping hoping sometime in 2020. That I'll I'll have that uh, I'll have that finished, but uh, but it can it can be a bit of a long and drawn out process too. Uh, yeah, that's to just record. like writing, long and drawn out. But when you have it finished, yeah. Ah. Well, that's that's sometimes it. Like you, uh, with with writing songs in general, there's uh, there's a couple of different phases that that you go through sometimes. Mm -hmm. And first of all, it's one thing to write the song. 
and then sometimes you just have to play it a bunch of times or, or, or give it a bit of space and come back to it and mm. then you can suddenly find ways of making it even better of improving the song same with writing yeah <laughs> because sometimes when you try to go in and make changes too soon mm -hmm. it, it doesn't it doesn't always work because I, I think sometimes that uh, when you write something originally then you're you're uh, you're almost too close to it at that time that's so, right so it's so it's hard to pick up on those little things that that I, that other people might notice, mm -hmm. or if you give it a bit of time and you come back to it, then they'll be obvious. Yeah, it'd be more better, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, um, you uh, are you going to be uh, doing a Christmas uh, CD at all for any year, or? Oh, that's a good idea. I, uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've considered it, and. And I think it's probably in my long-term plan to do something like that. Because you're a good... I, pardon me? Go ahead. Oh, yes. I, I think it's uh, it's an idea that I would like to uh, to do at some point in time. Um, either just to do a solo album by, by myself or perhaps even, uh, perhaps even uh, gather together some other artists and do a compilation album of Christmas songs. Would you do that in a DVD or a CD? I think uh, I think that would be in a in a CD. Mm -hmm. Although if we did a if we had a show and a concert mm -hmm. type of thing, then that would be a, that would be a wonderful idea to have as a DVD to have that filmed. Hey, that sounds groovy, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dating myself. Oh, yeah. Anyways, you have a song to sing, and we're going. What's it called? Well, I was going to perform the song, or the, the carol, rather, mm -hmm. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So we have that pre-recorded, and we're going to be putting that on right after uh, Matt and I finish our chatting. Yes. Chit-chat and all that. Well, so, I do hope that you enjoy, that you will enjoy that uh, performance. You going to lead us into it? Yeah. How, how you got to know the, how the notes and the guitar and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Is that a acoustic guitar? Yes it is, yeah. It's a um, it's actually a guitar that that I bought while I was traveling over in Australia. Oh yeah. Yeah so it's a it's an Australian brand guitar and the brand is called Maton. How do you spell that? That's that's spelled M A T-O-N. Meton. Meton. Yeah. Meton. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, that sounds rather intriguing. <laughs> so we're going to have you... So what else would you like to say before we sign off and listen to your wonderful song? Well, I'd just like to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a safe and happy holiday season. And all the best to you and your family, Patty. And you and yours, kiddo. God bless. Okay, thank you very much. See ya. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely Till the Son of God appear Rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel Shall come to thee, O Israel O come thou rod of Jesse free Satan's tyranny From depths of hell thy people save And give them victory o'er the grave Rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel shall come to Thou day 
spring come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel Come now, key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Rejoice. Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. Hello, this is Patty again with Angus, one of our cats. Oh, he's about six months old now. Oh, he's getting bigger and bigger. Anyways, I have a Christmas poem for you. It is written by me, of course, for Mrs. Claus, C-L-A-U-S-E. Anyways, Christmas is a time for giving and to receive. A time for children laughing and singing carols to praise our King. The King, whose name is Jesus, was born on Christmas Day, born of the Virgin Mary, came down to save us on that very blessed day. Children and parents rejoice, for the Lord himself is near, bringing to us who are cheering the gift of life for all who is dear. Thank you. This is a small poem, but I just wanted to include that with my little Angus. We'll have another guest in about a couple of seconds. So we'll see you in a moment. Hello, we're back again. We're going to be having a special guest who's going to be calling in all the way from California. Anyways, his name is Jimmy Lee Young. He has been here in Fort Wayne for a concert not many moons ago this year. So we're going to be talking about his new CD or album, what he's working on and also what's happening with the fires in California and how it's going. So we'll be with you in a moment. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening already. <laughs> we're, on the, we're on the west coast here, it's still morning. How are you guys? Well, happy Christmas and all. Yeah, happy holidays to you, Merry Christmas, and happy Thanksgiving. How's everything over there? Well, it's, it's no, rain, no uh, snow yet. We're going to get it in a couple of days. Wow. Yeah. So uh -huh. are we on the air now, or are we taking we are, What's going on? We are on? on the air. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, this is Jimmy Lee Young, eh? Hey, my friend, eh? Hey? And also... Right on. Rock and roll, everybody. Rock and roll, baby. It's good to hear your voice. Yeah, everything's been going good here. We're uh, working on the new record. 
Oh yeah, tell me about and, it. Uh, it's, we're almost done. It's getting done. It's really kind of a long process, you know, and we've got all new songs coming out next year and it's going to be really cool. I'm hoping to release it in the early spring. How uh, many songs are on it? We haven't made that decision yet because of the length of the songs. Um, oh. I like to do around an hour's worth of music, around maybe 50 minutes to 60 minutes. So depending on how they fall, and uh, there's a few songs that have definitely already made it to the album, and the other ones we're still thinking about it. So tell me, <clears throat> um, what it comes out in the springtime, you said? Mm -hmm. Hmm. How's the fire situation there in California? Is it starting to settle down? It is. The, the fires were, were really raging, and oh my God, it was so horrible because you'd go down the freeway, and the hills right next to the freeway would be on fire. Oh. Houses just burning. Uh, the metal rails on the freeway melted from the fire. Oh. And then in some places, the fire actually jumped the freeway. So it was burning like an inferno on both sides. Really bad, really bad. Was it near uh, you? My heart goes out to all those people that are affected. I'm north of there. I live in the high desert above Los Angeles. Oh, thank God. Thank God. How about the animals with Linda Blair? Linda is just doing amazing. She's done a few appearances lately. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a couple of Comic-Con type things that she's been uh, a guest at. And uh, that was kind of cool because uh, the last time I talked to her, she mentioned that she met a friend of mine. Oh. She was doing one of these things back east, and uh, it just so happened that Felipe Rose of the Village People was also there. Wow. And so I had mutual friends <laughs> meeting each other, and, uh, and it was kind of cool that, that, that Felipe and Linda finally got to meet because they're both wonderful people. Is he? And on one of the songs, the song is going to be called 10,000 Tears. Hmm. What's the oh, thing? No, I'm sorry, I take it back. The song is uh, Soul of a Man, and Felipe is going to be doing a guest spot on that one. Mm -hmm. 10,000 Tears is dedicated to the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation. Right. For all the good work she does with the puppy dogs. Ah. Uh, and uh, what, the theme that runs through your new uh, CD. Uh, what is it all about? Is it like storytelling from one end to the other? Uh, yes. Yeah. Most of my lyrics tend to, to run a, a story of some kind. Sometimes it's a story of maybe a spirit guide that comes into your life and then goes away. Yeah. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, a heartbreak I may have had or someone else's heartbreak. Sometimes I see things happening in the world and I feel compelled to write about it, especially Native America. Yeah. Soul of a Man is one of those stories um, about Native Americans told through the eyes of a grieving father. Mm. Because as you know, the, the suicide rate on the reservations is like three times the national average. It's very, very high. There's a hopelessness, a despondency that we want to cast out and, and try to write something and say something that might give people some hope. Yeah. So, um, the song Soul of a Man is told from a grieving father who sees his child dying mm. and wants to make a change in the world, not just for his own family, but for his tribe and for the world. So, uh, it sounds like a very beautiful uh, CD that you're putting together. I would love to have one of those kind of signed, autographed, and all that sort of stuff. You've got it. <laughs> and we're doing something different. Um, we're going to be releasing for the first time on vinyl. Oh, well, we got... So I'm really excited. We'll actually have albums. <laughs> well, we have a album player. Uh, so Pardon? We have an album player. Oh, right on. You know, yeah, but I think the new wave of, of music is people want that, that analog sound again, yeah. which, we, which has been gone for years. And I think it's something that's been missing from our, from our um, acti music activities yeah. to have... Everything has been so digitized and so digital and stiff and for so long. And, you know, if, for those of us who remember an album, mm -hmm. the analog sound was such that if you put an analog album on, it would have a warm sound, especially, oh, I remember my mom's records. She would have, like, Frank Sinatra and oh. King Cole. Wow. 
And you put this album on, and it, you'd swear they were somewhere in the room with you. Yeah, I, I know. We used to have these little 45s and 70, uh, 78s and 33, and oh my goodness, I was dating myself here. Yeah, and they all had that specific kind of a, a warm sound to them. And it's just the analog sound to me is always, I've always appreciated it more. I was very sorry to see that albums had been phased out when I did started my oh, music wow. career, but yeah. now well, it's coming, coming back. back. So I'm really excited about that, that there's a huge interest in LPs again. And then I just think that's amazing, you know? And that's cool. I'd much rather have a, a something physical to, to listen to instead of being on the computer all the time. Exactly. And the sound is actually different. You know, digitized music is clean. There's no pops, there's no skips. Yeah, well, that's but taking all the, the fun thing out is, of it. Is that it's just digital is so sanitized, it's so clean. Yes, it's yeah. clean, and that can be a good thing. Yeah. But to me, it's also too sanitary. You know, I don't mind putting an album on, and the second or third time I play it, there's a pop here or there. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> what you doing for Christmas, my friend? I have no idea. Oh. I have no, no plans currently. I do have to, I'll be flying around. I'll go into New Orleans and Texas here in a couple of weeks and uh, tying up some family business, and I'm going to come back, and we're doubling down on the uh, album. Oh, good. And so I can try to get this out as soon as, as, soon as possible, because... You know, um, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this from musicians before. Making a record is like the hardest thing in the world. That's right. And it, it's time consuming and it's expensive and you have to go through all these hoops. And uh, once you start an album, there's no stopping it. You have to get to the end of this album and put this out. Yeah. And you have deadlines. The Grammys and other things are deadlines you have to meet in order to enter your music in these competitions. So we're doing our, the best we can do to get it out there as soon as possible. Well, my friend, we have to say adieu. We love you, man. Love you, too. Thank you so much for uh, calling me, and you just never know. I might end up surprising you in Fort Wayne soon. <laughs> I do hope so. I miss you, man. Well, oh, Mary... you, too, guys. And I had have, I have the nicest time. I got a chance to reflect, and, and I went to, uh, to see James Dean's grave site and visit uh, Fairmount, and... It was something I'd wanted to do my whole life, and thank you guys for helping to make that possible. So Merry Christmas, my brother, and peace Merry be with Christmas, you. Merry Christmas, my good sister. Take care. Peace. Aho. Aho. This is, was the night before Christmas, the most famous Christmas poem ever written, and it's not clear whether Clement Clark Moore or Henry Livingston Jr. wrote it. They both are credited. But it was published first on December 23, 1823, in the Troy Sentinel, a newspaper in upstate New York. It has entertained and enthralled kids and adults ever since. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads and Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon and the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear? But a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Dunder and Blixen. Sorry. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys 
and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew on my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys was flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His draw little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke had encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprung to his sleigh to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he, there he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. Us always for the rest of our lives.